Cool. Hi, Anna. How are you doing? I'm good. I haven't seen you for so long. <laughs> I know. I'm selfishly just excited to talk to you, but I, I thought I that you have a lot of interesting things going on in your life, and I wanted to, you know, kind of like catch up with you and like let everybody know what you're doing. So mm -hmm. you're in Ukraine right now. Yes, I'm in Kiev. Yes, in Ukraine. How did you end up there? How, what, what's it like? Just like give us a little bit of a lowdown. So I actually, you know, I was in San Francisco after New York City Ballet uh, for two years in San Francisco. And um, I didn't really like it so much, really, for me. Um, when you went to San Francisco, were yes. you excited for certain things about San Francisco that you thought might be the case and then it ended up not panning out? Or? Yes, exactly. Like, I, for example, for me, uh, the changing from New York City Ballet was, uh, to San Francisco was for me uh, thinking of I will do more classical ballet. And it kind of was more neoclassical ballet. I felt like in New York City Ballet, seriously, I was dancing more ballet than Interesting. In San Francisco Ballet. Yeah, but um, at least for me, it didn't work. You know, some dancers love it, you know. Um, also, the difference was New York City Ballet is performing all the time, your own stage all the time. And I think for a dancer, that's like very important. I think a lot of people and, don't really know how much the difference is between those kinds of companies. So like at New York City Ballet, yeah. we have basically a fall, a nutcracker, a winter, a spring season and then sometimes something in the summer usually in Saratoga um, mm -hmm. what is the what is the program in San Francisco how often were you guys performing well in San Francisco is even more different from any other company because usually you start the season rehearsing in July right and you don't perform until December maybe there's a small tour in that time between but it's only maybe for a week or two and that's it you don't really you're not really performing from July till December oh wow um which for me it makes it harder you know like the moment you go on stage you're like oh my god I haven't been on stage for so long you know like you're more nervous and uh during the time from July to December you're just working and uh rehearsing everything you're gonna start doing after Nutcracker Mm -hmm. uh, so that season starts in January and you do many programs. I'm not sure how many programs, but uh, are you guys performing were you, when you were there? Were you performing like on the weekends or was it throughout the week? Because like at New York City Ballet, for people that don't know, we perform when we're in season. Yeah. It's like a six week season and it's Tuesday through Sunday. So what's yeah. it like at San Francisco? No, in San Francisco, it's a bit different. Uh, for example, you maybe you perform uh, two weeks and then you have one week off, but it's not off. It's rehearsing period until the next other week. To prep the and next. Two weeks or two, and you always have one week in the middle to prepare for the next program. And, and you would be performing like Tuesdays through Sunday? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. And how, do you, and how did they um, do casting there? Like when do you find out? Um, you know how, like in New York City Valley, we all, we were always fighting to uh, get a two week uh, notice of yeah. knowing about casting. Well, in San Francisco, it's only one week before. Oh wow! Yeah, so at New yeah. York City Valley, we find we find because of, we're with the union and we've negotiated, we find out the schedule two weeks before that performance mm -hmm. goes up. So you don't know mm -hmm. your casting, but in San Francisco, it's even later. Yes, but the only thing that is different is like because you rehearsing, you already know what you you're know. dancing. Yeah. Unless all of a the sudden there's some injury or something, then you, you're probably on right. stage. So but, everyone uh, has a strong I, idea. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So, mm -hmm. And then and then they're performing in January. Then then how often until that July? Um. No, from January the, until January, February, March, April. Until I think the beginning of May. Uh huh. So it's really like that corner of the year, and then the rest is like you have to condition yeah. yourself and rehearse yourself yeah. and and kind of self motivate mm -hmm. without a show there. That's hard. 
exactly and also it's like uh it's many hours of rehearsals uh throughout the rehearsal period seriously like sometimes i was i didn't even have a break like sometimes i had seven hours seriously and without a break what i remember at one time i was rehearsing like four different ballets like i was like oh my god seriously like, did you join as a principal and, the strange thing is because you're not performing, you know, like in New York City Ballet, you're like, oh, yes, I have all day in this in this theater, but you perform. So it's like a, like you let things go for some reason. It's a different feeling, you know? Yeah. Um, Wait, so you're saying so, when it's just for rehearsal, it's a little bit harder to find that energy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Did you join San Francisco as a principal? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. And that was your schedule as a principal? Yes. Wow, that's incredible. That's incredible. So that yeah. was not the place for you. Like you would think like, oh, no, <laughs> she's just rehearsing three hours. And that's it. No, you're like wow. all day. That's there. incredible. Well, they do have beautiful studios there. When you were there and you would post oh, videos, I was like insane. so jealous of the, of the space insane. that you had. And also, like, the the biggest studio, like, uh, whenever they're, like, uh, doing one cast, you can do it in the back because there's, like, it's, like, two studios basically size. So you can really, so. like, rehearse if you're the second cast. You can have some space and do your thing. That's yeah. nice. Their studios are so gorgeous there. So when did you kind yeah. of – were, were you always giving yourself this option of if I don't like it here, I'll go somewhere else? Or, like, you know, that's kind of, like, might have been a moment where you were, like – well, what next if I don't want to mm -hmm. be here? How did you make the decision to end up in Europe? Um, well, I knew for sure I wanted to leave San Francisco. Um, I During the time in San Francisco, I the last season, I actually got injured before I had to perform. You know, before Nutcracker started, I got injured and I hurt my calf. And then trying to come back as soon as possible, I right. heard the other one. And it was like this, because yeah. I was trying to come back so much faster than I should. And, Which uh, I think is kind of the difficult. case when you feel like all of the performing is centered in one part of the year. If you happen to be injured yeah. for that part of the year, and then maybe you get better by the time July rolls around and there's no show to happen. Yeah. Like that's, That is the hard thing about that kind of schedule. Yeah. But... I also think uh, sometimes uh, if people don't know you uh, as a dancer and you're trying to show them, you're trying even harder than you your body can, really, yeah. you know? Yeah, there was a certain amount uh, where you had felt like you had to prove yourself still. You know, like in New York City Ballet, I was there for many years. So, right. like, if I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this because, you know, this is tight or whatever, you know, the teacher is like, oh, it's totally fine. Yeah. But it, when you're new in another company, sometimes you have this different uh, pressure. Totally. So uh, it's a bit harder in that way. Um, so during that time that I was injured, I was thinking and um, I also wanted to be able to dance outside, not just in the company. It's something I've always wanted. And during the time in San Francisco, um, they didn't really let me do very important things I wanted to do. Like a gala. Outside. Like a gala. The, yes, not, yes, gala. But, you know, when you go to a gala, uh, you meet people, you know. And from there, you meet other person that maybe they want to invite you to do a full length ballet. It's like, it's something that's it's all a net connected. Network. It's a circle. Networking, yeah. yeah. And um, I've always wanted to do that. And I felt that if I stayed, I was not going to do that. And I just knew I wanted to leave for sure, you know. Right. Uh, I didn't know where, but I actually came to Ukraine in Kiev in 2018 to do uh, Swan Lake. Like, that was my actually first time at doing Swan Lake. And um, I actually really liked it. Um, I liked the city and uh, the teacher I had there and everything. And um, I, so I ended up coming here and um, I actually really like it. Um, I don't feel like I have a huge pressure. Like, let's say if I need to take two days off, I like, I take those two days off. I'm not like, 
oh my god you know and uh i think my body at uh 33 i'm 33 right now i think sometimes you just need that time you know you're not like 18 years old that you can just do whatever uh your body takes longer to recuperate so um, in that case also i really like it um and also when people ask me to go do something i'm like Yes, I don't even have, like, of course I ask here because I need the permission, but here they let me go, you know, like it's. So did you so go completely by yourself or did you go with a boyfriend or how did you? I came with a friend, uh, Nikolai Gorodisky. He used to be my boyfriend, but uh, not anymore, but uh, I came with him here. Um, so it wasn't so like. Uh, that feels a little lonely. safer. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, but um, anyways, here people are very nice to me and uh, the, the guys I also, with other partners I uh, rehearse and work with, they're really nice to me and everything. So so what's the exact, um, I, exact name of the company? Yes, it's National Ballet of Ukraine. And it's the national company in the Ukraine. And it's, it's ballet. It's not also ha having an opera aspect. It's just... You guys are doing like the classics. Yes, I mean in the in the theater there is the opera and other things, you know. Okay, but separate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh wait, here is. <laughs> I don't know if you remember her. I do, of course I do. She looks good. How old is she now? She is six, almost seven. Oh, she's still a baby. Yes, and now with the quarantine, she needs another haircut. Like every two months, she really needs a haircut. <laughs> she looks and, good. <laughs> uh, but now she's very hairy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's cute. also a big company, you know? Oh, yeah, she gives you a lot of company. Yeah, that's great. Because that, otherwise, you're by yourself right now. Yes, yeah. So when, yeah. Did, it, when did things shut down for you there? Um, it was... Uh, March, uh, I think it was the second week of March. I think March 16 or something like that. Yeah. So like kind of I same went here. The, 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 I went to the theater that day. It was, uh, I think, a Tuesday or something. And already, like, they were like, no, you cannot enter to the studio because only 10 people can take class. And 10 okay. people were already inside? Yes. And so I, that day I actually went down to the stage and I just did a bar there. And really after that, uh, that day also they cancel all rehearsals, like uh, no pianist, nothing. Um, and just the next day I was like, I'm not even going to go to the theater. If this is happening right now, I'm like, yeah. I'm not even going, you know, because I mean, there wasn't any rehearsals, but people could take class. Uh -huh. I was just like. I'm I'm not going. So how often are you are you guys normally performing there in Kiev? Um well the season here is different, you know, like compared to other companies like for example maybe let's say Sleeping Beauty is coming or this program um is coming. It's not like that. Um every day there's different things. Different ballets, different operas. Like it's usually one day is ballet, the next day is opera, uh -huh. next day is ballet, and then it's opera. And in that time, it's not like Sleeping Beauty, Sleeping Beauty, Sleeping Beauty. It's not it's Sleeping Beauty and Nutcracker and then Whoa. this and this. So when yes. you rehearse for something like Sleeping Beauty, how many shows do you get of that within that time frame? Oh, just one. But yeah. you kind of always have them ready to go. Yeah, like for example, maybe oh. I could have only one full length in that month. Or two full lengths in that month. Uh huh. How many other prints are you? Unless, is unless there... they were some program of like gala program, so uh -huh. then you do other things. Right. But usually like that. How many yeah. people are in the company there? Many. I think uh, over a hundred. Oh wow! For and and is there hundred. is there a hierarchy? Is there rank? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you entered as a principal. Yes. Mm -hmm. How many other principals are there? Oh, I don't actually know, but many. And are they 
international like is it are they from everywhere no mo most of people are from ukraine uh okay. maybe there is uh, one girl from united states that is in the core ballet and other girls from japan in the core ballet but most of people are from ukraine which you know ukraine and russia have a really strong ballet culture so there are a lot of people Actually, training. I think in russia is the same thing with programs it's like a Oh, like okay. that, all different. It's not like uh, one. Interesting. So, have you gotten to know the other principals or just the men that you're dancing with and uh, better your um, partners? Well, that's another thing. I need to start learning the language. I started taking <laughs> lessons before this started. So, now I haven't been doing that. Uh, very bad for me. Uh, <laughs> but you're already like speaking English and, and Spanish, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And some some people speak in English a little bit, you know. Uh, so I speak to those people for sure. I'm sure that it must have been isolating at first. Like, I have a French husband, you know, and sometimes and... I think it's better that you don't understand the language. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of happy living in your own world. That's hysterical. Yes, yeah, because if somebody <laughs> says something uh, bad about you or something, you know, like they're still talking anything, but I don't care. You know, that's amazing. I would be like crying and, and like looking around for friends, but you're really confident. Like you're like you're at an age where you like, and you've always been like this. You kind of do your own thing, <laughs> and so you probably yeah. kind of like that privacy that you get by. Yeah. Exactly. That's, yeah. that's amazing. That's cool. So how did you, when you came there, were you, you started kind of as a, as a trial or did you sign a, an extended contract right away? Well, yes. I, at the beginning I came like basically like the first performance I did Swan Lake in, in September. And, um, I only had like, I was kind of like a guest at that time in November. I signed a contract this last November for a year. Huh? This last November? This, yes. Oh, wow. I, and then I signed a, a year and a half uh, contract. Yeah. That's exciting. So you... Think... And now we're, we're doing quarantine, so... <laughs> right, now it's all to whatever. But at least I'm getting paid. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, so you committed to having an apartment there and like, did you move all of your stuff from San Francisco all the way to Ukraine? How did that work? Actually, I have a lot of things in storage. Um, in San Francisco? Yes. Oh, wow. I, I only brought here just like three luggages and that's it. Everything uh -huh. else, I left it there. Um, I don't know. I wanted, I wanted to send it here, but I wasn't sure yet. So I, I still had it in uh, storage. Now when quarantine finishes which I don't know when will be I know <laughs> I feel like it's not gonna be until next year <laughs> I know I, I kind of I feel similarly like who knows when we're gonna well especially for our industries when yes. when are people gonna feel comfortable coming back into a theater and sitting next to a stranger is is the big problem exactly exactly I mean, I feel like for performances, I feel like it's not going to be until next year. I agree. I don't know of us rehearsing maybe a little bit before, but uh, not performing. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I know. It's super scary. It's just like we're living through a time that is just incredible. I mean, we'll never forget these years. Like, I lived through the pandemic of 2020. <laughs> Hopefully, it's only 2020. <laughs> crazy it's really crazy. <laughs> so how's your apartment like what is the there must be such a cultural shift for you but you're adapting so well like how's the building how's the food how is how is it on the street getting your groceries in normal times okay so um um my apartment it's all furnished but the furniture is like crap so like eventually I like seriously want to fix everything, but at least I, I because I, I didn't want to buy furniture or anything right. in the beginning, so I didn't care. Um, but the apartment size is really nice. Actually, do you want me to show you my studio? Yes, I do. <laughs> We've seen a little bit of it well, on Instagram, but I, I'd love to see it. Like, it's seriously like the living room is kind of big. Wait. So like I have this much of space to do whatever I want. That's great. You know? I put a 
floor, ballet floor. How is it also. to jump though? You know, it depends on what's underneath. Is it cement or? Oh no, I barely do any jumps. Yeah. I do first jump, second, a few changements, some échappées, and that's it. I took a class. <laughs> the, I took a class the other day with Olga through Zoom. And we were doing front uh -huh. She was like, first of all, she's like, put on your point shoes. And I'm on a hardwood floor. I was like, I can't do that. And then she was like, okay, fuetes and all the second turns. <laughs> I literally did 16 fuetes in my parents' dining room, but I'm kind of feeling like my body hurts really bad from it. So I think that, you yeah. know, there is something to doing enough and then knowing when to stop in this kind of space and, yes. and being smart about it. Yeah. 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 So, um, but like before the quarantine, like, is, is it their different food that you're eating? Like, how is the cultural um, I, shift for you? I actually really like the food here. I mean, anyways, if I cook or whatever, I go to the grocery and... You cook what you want, it's, yeah. It's the same food. It's nothing different. But um, I love the food here, you know, like uh, different types of things that they make everything. I actually really like it. Oh, that's great. And actually, in the theater, there's also a canteen. Usually, I always eat their lunch. You know, it's like really uh, like food and um, it's very cheap. <laughs> so I just always eat there uh, for lunch. And then dinner, I always uh, cook here or whatever, something. Nice. Yeah. Nice. You've adapted so well. I just, you know, there's always um, young kids that are looking for jobs. You know, we both come from SAB and there's always a certain amount of kids that find their, their professional work in Europe. And, yeah. and especially at a young age, I just always thought how isolating it might be to go all the way to a place where you don't speak the language. And like, what would your advice be for someone that's a student that's, you know, maybe auditioning and feeling like there's no opportunities for them in the U.S. and maybe they should look at Europe? Like, what would you say about the experience to a young dancer? I actually, I think uh, you always have to have an open minded with everything, not just companies, but even repertoire or anything. Um, and don't, um, don't hide what, wherever you are, like show where you are. Uh, I think it's important now that, especially now there's so much social media and everything, there's some way to not just be like, away from everything um so i think uh i think there's a possibility everywhere mm -hmm. you are it does i mean of course i'm lucky i was in um, amazing companies like new york city ballet and san francisco and that in a way uh, i wouldn't say gave me a name but like you know i wasn't uh, starting but i think there's opportunities to start in any company that you can be you can still be one of the best dancers still in those companies. And I think uh, you can have a career anywhere. In terms of as, uh, moving away and, and the, the different cultural changes in the language, um, would that be have been scary to you if you had made this um, move when you were like, say, 17 or 18? No. I Since I was young, I've always, uh, in that way, had my... Uh, open mind uh -huh. I just I just think if you work hard and work smart uh, you can have a career anywhere really that's you know? awesome yeah that's awesome and yeah. and especially through technology now being far away from family and friends isn't as big of a deal as it used to be exactly I mean imagine I remember when I was young and I came to school of American Ballet we when calling my dad, it was like calling my dad, you know, yeah. like every maybe four days. Or exactly. Once a week we call my dad. You know? Exactly. And you had to do it on a calling card. Remember, you had to like push yeah. fi 15 numbers. And yes. then it was like, you I have like a $10 calling yeah. card. To and then call it's like, you dad. have 25 minutes left when the yeah. call would start. That's funny. I mean, it's like so crazy how things have changed. So, exactly. so you mentioned your dad. Tell us about what, when you were growing up, where you're from, and how you made it first to New York. Okay, so I was born in Argentina, Buenos Aires. And um, when I was in first grade, I started ballet. Uh, after school, I, uh, my mom put me in ballet. She put also my brother in soccer. You have a lot so of siblings, right? Yes, we're a total six kids. And you're the youngest. I have two sisters and three brothers. You're the youngest girl. 
girl. Yeah, like I'm number five and uh-huh. I have a younger brother. And she didn't put any of your older sisters in ballet? Actually, yes, um, they did. But uh, because my parents were traveling and these things, because they moved to Europe at that time or something, they stopped doing it. So my mom always was like, kind of thing about ballet, but she didn't know much of it. You know, she she did take ballet classes when she was young, but nothing professional. Did she like to go see ballet performances? And that's kind of where her love or push for you guys came from? I actually don't think so. Because before I actually started ballet, or even when I started ballet, I don't think I ever saw a performance, you know? It's not like a tradition in the U.S. that is like Nutcracker and like you take your kids already at five or four years old and they go to see the Nutcracker. Right. Uh, I, I didn't see the Nutcracker at that time. So, um, no, it was not in part of uh, our court culture to go see the ballet. Uh-huh. And so, and so when did you kind of, I think, I feel like very early on, you were like, this is what I'm going to do. And this is who I'm going to be like, you know, you were like a little mini Paloma Herrera. When did that? It's funny you mentioned this because in Argentina, you know, at that time now you have YouTube and you can see all these videos of so many dancers, you know, but in Argentina, I only saw who came to Argentina to dance and like the best dancers at that time. Actually, I was able to see Paloma Herrera and Saharova because mm-hmm. she came to Argentina to do Corsair. And um, so that's all I saw, you know, like uh, um, maybe, yes, my teacher gave me a few videos of uh, Maximova, uh, but that's it. I didn't see anything else, you know. Um, so I was uh, a big fan of Paloma Herrera at that time uh, because I, I had all these magazines. And I had a whole book of, you know, like pictures of newspaper, of like right. magazines and all <laughs> these things. And, and I always Paloma was, like, was a principal at ABT at the time. Exactly. Yeah. She was very young. Also, at 19 years old, she became a principal. Wow. And... Uh, but she also joined the company at 15. So oh, wow. she was also very young joining. Um, so for me, when I would see like all of her career, I was like, I want to be like this. I want to enter the company at 15. Uh, all these, you know, I had all these ideas, you know. She's from but Ar- everybody has a different career. Is she from Argentina too? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's like yeah. an obvious idol, right? So is that why you went to SAB and and went to New York City? Because you wanted to follow her path? No. Actually, that was uh, when I was 13, my ballet teacher, uh, she knew about the school because uh, she had students before, like uh, Herman Cornejo, Marianela Nunez, uh, Luciana Paris or something. And she brought them to the summer. You know, oh, okay. so she she knew about the summer course, and um, so my teacher said, "Oh, you know, like it's a very good ballet school. I think she should try to go there." You know, mm-hmm. because there's after being in the U.S., I think there's more opportunities for jobs. You know, after school, so my teacher said this is probably a very good idea and my sister already lived in new york so it was easier for us to travel you know to uh um the so USA. did you stay with her yes at the beginning yes and then we started renting uh, an apartment you and your mom uh, yes okay and my younger brother was there because he was very young so That's so he, cute yes and um so i auditioned and I got in and I started right away. I started right away. So then you, you joined the winter term right after your first summer? Yes, like actually I entered when, because the school in Argentina starts in different time. Oh, right. Like okay. I came when I was finished with school, uh, with seventh grade. And that was, let's say, December. So I came around that time to audition to the School of American Ballet. Oh, I see. Okay. So I started right away, basically half year of school. At what age? 13? 
I was 13. Wow. And to start school, I had to, I remember I was like, oh my God, I not just to ballet, I didn't care. Yes, I, I want to start right away. But I had to go to school, you know, like I was like, I just finished school. I don't want to get me a break. But also I had to do, because they said it would be very hard for me to start on eighth grade in half of the year already right. that started. So they put me in seventh grade again. <laughs> Wait, what school? Did you go to PPAS? For half of a year. Huh? Did you go to PPAS? I went to, I went to, to PPAS. The Public Performing Arts yes. School. What is it on? Yes. Like 57th Street? No, it's like 40s, like 48 or 49. Okay. I went for one week and I was like taking no new classes. Like everything was stuff I've already, I, I had already done. And my parents were like, we have to send you home. So somehow we quickly figured out some money to go to the private school, but um, uh, it was, I was going to be sent home if we couldn't, because for, for my parents, it was like, you can only do ballet if, you know, the academics are still there. So wait, so you guys went and auditioned in December and your mom just, you guys just stayed there. Your mom's like, okay, I'm going to move here. Were her older kids already out of the house or did she have some kids still in high school? I had my other bro brother that um uh, still lived in the house but she, he stayed with my dad and he was already older like uh, okay. maybe if I was 13 he was already 18 oh you know? okay so he'd already so, been through school yeah, yeah. okay that makes yeah. a little more sense I'm like wow your mom yeah. she just talk about going with the flow like you she had an open mind <laughs> for sure you know what I mean like that's pretty crazy and did your and your brother moved with you your your little brother uh, yes, because I mean he was young. He was starting, I think, first grade at that time. And that's something. kind of a cool or opportunity no, to no, learn English, grade, but, huh? It's kind of a cool opportunity for him to learn English from a young age. Amazing! I mean, he was speaking like he he was one of person that lived in New York forever. You know? Yeah. So when you came to SAB, how was your English? Um. I knew English because in the school that I used to go, I had also English, okay. but it's not the same. You know, it's like if you learn Spanish and you go to Argentina and you're like, oh, yeah. you know, and the best way to know if you really understand the language is if you watch TV. That's uh -huh. when you know that if you start learning, not learning, but if you start understanding everything, you know you now you really know the language, really. So did you, know? you use TV but as a way to kind of improve your English? Everything. I mean, maybe watching movies or also um, going to school, really, mm -hmm. you know. I had to, I, mean, I remember in school when I had to give presentations, I was like, oh my God, I'm so nervous. <laughs> That's crazy. You know? How many years did you because go to PPAS? I was like, All of a sudden, I have to give presentations. It's not like I'm in first grade, you know. Like I was like seventh grade, eighth grade. It was um, not that easy, you know. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> what was I going to say? How long did you go to PPAS for? The whole time of high school? No, because I think I went for sure two years. Two mm -hmm. years. And then I um, did a homeschool mm -hmm. from, in Spanish from Argentina. Oh, that's kind of a relief. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I remember, I think the last year, like D, I, I had like really morning class. I, it was very hard to make it work. With when you're school. at the higher levels at um, SAB, it's, it, school can be, can be yeah. challenging to fit in. But Yes, for sure. Yeah. Because yeah. you start instead of like a regular student with your class, your ballet after school classes mm -hmm. are like at 1030. Kind of mm -hmm. like mimicking a company schedule. So yeah. when did you get into New York City Ballet? How old were you? I was 17. So like after SAV, actually I was 16 years old and I joined um ABT Studio Company, which is the right. small company of young dancers of ABT. But the season for that is only like a few months. It's like six months, really, that you're really working. So then when I finished ABT Studio Company, I needed a job. <laughs> so 
I auditioned for San Francisco Ballet and New York City Ballet. And I got actually both offers, but I went to New York City Ballet. And uh, actually, I'm very happy I did. <laughs> yeah. So, like, your, you know? your real love and has always been of ballet is the classics. So how... How did you how did you keep that love going while you were at New York City Ballet? And how do you feel about all that time you spent in the Balanchine technique? How how has that made you a different type of classical dancer? Well, first of all, I think uh, one of the reasons uh, I I love the classics is also because since I was very young, I grew up with that, you know, um, in Argentina before I came to uh, SAV. And it really suits uh, your, your abilities well too. Like you have a mm -hmm. beautiful port de bras and posture and you love to like do the kind of tricks that you might find in, you know, classical ballet. Mm -hmm. You love to do fuetes and you love to, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It suits you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I've always had a dream for that. And in, 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 then in New York City Ballet, um, Every time, uh, let's say I had a gala or something, some performance, I've always, I always wanted to do the classical ballets, potides, or anything that I could do outside, you know. Uh, so that's how I kind of kept it. But at the same time, I think it's very hard to do it if you don't have that uh, training, you know, like. Uh, um, so your training before you came to SAB was, was very more traditional and classical. Yes, yes. But, um, and that's how I kept it. And my last years in the uh, San Francisco Ballet, I already knew I wanted to do something else. Like, let's say maybe the last three years I was in, in, uh, in New York City Ballet, I knew that I wanted to do something else. So, like, I already kind of little by little started, you know, um, trying to change some details of things, arms, and even, like, I remember, because I always kind of, like, had my arms very much closer to my chest and everything, and then I started little by little, more like this, more like this. So are you, are you turning more like this now? Yes, I'm turning more like this. Oh, wow. Yeah, Amazing. for sure. Yeah, I do you know? remember, I remember the uh, time when you were like this. I do remember that. <laughs> yeah. But I think one of the inspirations of turning, I I was like, you know, when Sophia and Sylvie, she joined the company, I was like, oh, my God. Like, I would watch, like, her footwork and her arms and everything. I was she like, phenomenal. oh, my God. So know? how was it being in San Francisco with her? Um, it was great. Um, you know, she's also leaving San Francisco Ballet. She's oh. joining another company in, uh, in Europe. Oh, wow. How old is she now? Um, I think she's 42, uh -huh. if I'm not mistaken. Oh, wow, that's incredible. Yeah. She, but also, I think amazing. she's going to be also teaching. She's also doing other things as well, you know. Um, so when you went to San Francisco, but, were you like, hey, or was she very established there? And kind yes, of she in... was like, oh, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> that's really it's cute. Funny. Yeah. That's yeah. cute. I mean, that but, kind of thing yeah, when you I, have I, the bonding experience like we all do at New York City Ballet, when you see each other out of context, yeah. you realize how close we kind of all become. Yeah, yeah. But yes, I had this, when I was going to San Francisco, I had this dream of like, you know, classical ballet and more and enough. And then I was like, oh, but I feel like in the Balanchine, I'm dancing more, you know, like when we went with San Francisco Ballet for the Balanchine uh, Festival in 2018, uh, I think that was in uh, November, if I'm not mistaken, it's in City Center that we danced. And we did uh, Divertimento number 15. I was doing actually my third part in the ballet. Which one did <laughs> so you do? I, I did the... Um, uh, sis girl. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, that's funny though, because of course to them, you're incredibly Balanchine because uh -huh. you were in New York City Ballet for so many years, even though when you were in New York City Ballet, you didn't feel like that was exactly your mm -hmm. genre. Yeah. It's funny. You know, Elise, she's, she, she actually put everything for us, like, uh, the choreography and rehearsed us. Elise, I Elise don't know born. you know her. 
right? Elise Bourne? Yeah. yeah. And, yes. And um, she actually loved me <laughs> and I loved her back. <laughs> <laughs> I like the energy was very different, you know, from. Well, you guys um, also ballet. have a common history, you know, mm -hmm. of New York yeah. City Ballet. I think it's like a special club that you can never mm -hmm. get out of. <laughs> yeah. And whenever there was another teacher that didn't know the the, the ballet, I would I would be like, no, it's not like that. <laughs> like I was like, and I would be like, you know what she's doing is not the right choreography. <laughs> Anna, <laughs> it's true though when they, 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 when you've seen something for so like, long. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's and hard not when, to speak. Whenever up. they would be like, oh no, this music. I was like, no, it's not like that. I have not done this piece, but I watched it many years. It's not like this. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> okay, because I hate doing something wrong, you know? And yeah. you know that it's not like that. Yeah, know? yeah, it's hard. So <laughs> so being in this company in Ukraine, you probably won't do any Balanchine for a really long time or maybe ever again. Yes, yes, but I... Too bad. I was going to go to uh, Mexico with Gonzalo. Oh, and we okay. were going to do Chaipa and uh, Ruby. So. <laughs> but now it's not happening. Right, right. So, Didn't you have yeah. this amazing experience of doing Chaipa with Julio Boca when you were like really, really young? What was that? Yes. Um, yeah, I was 18 years old. Okay. Uh, so I was in the court of ballet, of New York City Ballet at that time. And um, I had this amazing opportunity of dancing with him. I was like, oh, my God. Was it I back in Argentina? Dancing. Yes. And uh, we're actually, it was a tour in different countries. Oh, wow. Like uh, we went to Uruguay, Paraguay, uh, to Spain, um, and Venezuela. And I did Chaipa with him and Don Quixote. How did, he, how did he know of you and, and pick you? Well, I knew, I met him actually at Steps, you okay. know, from Willie Borman's class. And um, <laughs> I was just leaning by the bar, you know, and I was right next to him, you know, I was, and uh, he's like, oh, what are you doing this summer? And I said, <laughs> uh, actually, like nothing, <laughs> you know, because I used to go to Argentina. At that time, we didn't have the fall season at right. all, right. you know. So we had like I don't know two months off. Or it was something. it was like a lot. Eleven weeks. Off. It yeah. was a eleven weeks off or something. And I was like, no, nothing. I'm just going home to Argentina. And she's like, oh, give me your phone number, and uh, I might have some performances that uh, you can we can dance. And I was like, oh, okay. And then when they called home in Argentina. I was like, my mom was like, oh, yes, it was from Julio Boca that you're going to have to go over her. And I was like, ah! <laughs> what an amazing experience. Yes. I mean, because yes. at 18, you're not really doing anything in New York City Ballet partnering wise. So then you're yeah. suddenly like really partnering with this like amazing like legend. And were you nervous? Yeah. What, what was it like? Um, no, I was not nervous. Good for you. Oh. I think when you're that young, you don't get so nervous. You don't realize of things. I did. When you're older, <laughs> you start thinking more, I think. Oh, I was really nervous. I was way more nervous when I was younger, for sure. Really? Oh, my God. No. So nervous. Well, good for you. So you got to, like, fully, like, enjoy the experience. Yeah. And uh, so when I actually came back from doing that, um, Sean Lavery at that time, our teacher, um he asked me oh how was your summer and i said oh i danced with julio boca <laughs> summer, you know? he probably didn't believe you yes sorry it got yeah you're back i see um yes and then i said to him and he's like oh so what did you dance and i said oh i danced chaifa and he's like oh really and let me tell you after that the ne that season, I did Chaipa for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Who was yes, your partner yes. in Chaipa? Uh, it was I, it, Andy Fayette. Uh huh. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then from uh, there, you know, I remember. We were, just gonna, we were just gonna do two performances, but at that time, I think uh, 
Damien Wetzel and uh, Miranda Weiss, they had another ballet in that same program. So we end up doing four shows of Amazing. that season, which is a lot for, for is. any dancer. How to do. It so, is. Even yeah. now, I think people are still like chomping at the bit to get like just one chai pa. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Do you know, I remember right before you got promoted, was it to soloist? Because we had just done all of these pas de cots in Swan Lake. Remember that? You and Tyler Peck and I did it like... Torture. We did like 11 pas de cots. And then you guys were in Swans too. No, I think it was 14 shows. Yeah, it was something, something insane. It was, it was something insane. Like we were like, for some reason, the only cast that there was. You know, they don't do yeah. pas de cot anymore. They took it out. No. Yeah. Why? I think they just. Peter, it's very hard. <laughs> P- Peter. Well, I think Peter decided he wanted to shorten it or something. I don't know exactly why. And I, w- as doing the Swan Queen, I was like, "Oh my God, that was my rest." Yeah. You know, like I need that. But actually, it kind of works yeah. out better to not have so much time to be sitting on a stool waiting for your fuetes to happen. You know. So, mm-hmm. but I remember. I think it was after all of these pot cots and this crazy run of Swan Lake, you and I got a pedicure at that nail salon that used to be across the street from Lincoln Center, kind of where it's now like New York Sports Club. Or, and there's a dry yes. cleaners there. And yeah. there used to be a nail salon. That was very convenient. I wish that was still there. Yes. And we were getting our nails <laughs> done, and you were like really talking about wishing to be promoted and feeling like, when is it going to happen? And you were feeling very frustrated, and you got promoted the next day. Do you remember that? Well, I remember really well because it was very why I wanted to be promoted is because with, during Swan Lake uh, with Tyler Peck, we both were in the core ballet and also doing this role every performance. So, like, we were doing swans, white swans, which is a lot of standing. Yeah. A lot of standing. And then Potty cut. Which and then again, for people wants. that people that are, are watching that aren't dancers, yeah. if you're in your point shoes and you're in your tights and the whole thing, and you're just standing there, it is not like just standing in your tennis shoes somewhere, waiting in line somewhere. Like it is like you're turning out, you're holding a posture. We're standing on like really hard cardboard. That's not like okay. point shoes are not made to be stood in. So, yeah. so it's really exhausting and, and quite difficult to do those kinds of roles where you're standing a lot. Yes. And I remember in some shows, because I was not in the front of the swans, I would like <laughs> stickle my foot. No, because my tendon hurt like crazy. I was like dying. I mean, 14 shows of this is yeah. not cool. Yeah, no, know? it's like, it's, it's amazing that you guys survived that. Yeah. I was tired and, and I, I wasn't doing the core with you guys. I was just tired from doing the pot of cots. But you guys had all of that. That's incredible. I have to look. I have to find the, the photo. We have a photo of our faces and we're like. <laughs> I don't think I have it. You should show me. I have to find it. I'm, I'm sure I had it, but I don't know where it is now. I have to look. So then you got but, promoted yeah. after that because you were like. I better get promoted, otherwise I cannot sustain this type of schedule. Well, I remember, I remember, like uh, during uh, some rehearsals in between of the performances, I think I was like just like laying down on the floor, and Susie Handel, she said, "Oh, come on!" Like she said something. "Oh, come on!" I uh, like, like if I was like, I don't know how you say it. Um, exaggerating or yeah. something, and I was like. Oh my God, you have no idea. I'm not even exaggerating. I was almost going to cry. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to get through those moments. How did Peter promote you? Um, it, um, how he promoted? Ah, okay. So it's funny. This day was very funny. So actually Tyler goes to uh, speak to um, Peter because she actually, after so many shows, she actually needed some time off because uh, she had some thing going on with her foot or something. So she goes to speak with him and he is like, well, you know what? Anyways, I was gonna wait until your birthday or something because she was very young. She's like two years younger than me and I was promoted, I think eight, nine, I was 19. 
So she was 17. I don't know. She was probably still, still 16. And she, she was like waiting until, I don't know. I don't remember exactly the age. But he was going to wait for her birthday or something, she, I think. And uh, then he, he promotes, but I'm going to promote you. So don't worry. And nah, nah, nah. so she already knows this day. Okay. So some people start, start to know, she, they know that they promote Tyler or something. And um, then I don't know, people start rumors and na, 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 na. they're like, people already started knowing that I was promoted, right? But I didn't come to class that day. <laughs> I went to steps. <laughs> <laughs> so when I come to the, the theater, like people are all looking at me strange, like very weird. Like people are already like knowing and everything. And then they're like, oh, you know, like, uh, they, uh, you have to go speak with Peter and wants to speak with you or something. So that, that's how I got promoted. But, but it, was a, it was a rumor around you before it was but actually... everybody knew except me because I wasn't in the theater that day. <laughs> that's amazing. And how did you get promoted to principal? Did he do anything special or...? Uh, that, that was funny. Um, so after rehearsing a Bram Schomburg quartet, uh, on stage. Um, Were you the soloist girl or the pas de deux couple? I was third movement principal. Oh, you were third movement. That's right. We did the yes. same part. Yeah. Yeah. And um, then um, the secretary of Peter, he's like, well, actually, no, it was like this. So I finished the rehearsal and Peter grabs me, no? he He's like <laughs> hugging me like this and he's like, I don't know. I don't remember what he said, but I don't know. I thought he, I don't, it was so strange, you know, like uh, he was just great. He was going to say me something. He's like looking around, right? I think he was trying to look around for someone else that he was going to promote as well at that time, at the same time, but he didn't find her. <laughs> and so he's like, oh, good girl. Like in there, like if it was a good rehearsal or something. And I thought that was so strange. And I actually told this story to uh, Joaquin and Gonzalo, and they're like, oh, you're going to get promoted. Ah! Gonna get promoted. <laughs> and I was like, stop. Don't say this. What if I? it's not that what they want to tell me, you know? Because then also Devry Coolish was like, oh, you know, uh, Peter wants to talk to you maybe before the performance or something. So that was, that's why, like, then Joaquin and Gonzalo is like, oh, you're going to get promoted. No, no, no. And I was like, stop. Because what if it's not? What if it's asking me to do some other performance or something? Yeah. Stop saying this. Yeah. You know? And um, so then I think it would, before Ramansky, uh Four Seasons, um, um, Rebecca Crone also just finished uh, performing some Balanchine Ballet. And I was ready to perform. She just finished, and I was ready to perform. And he promoted us uh, to principals there on stage. And uh, I remember I couldn't concentrate throughout the whole ballet. Oh, you had to perform afterwards. Three. Wait, what did you do in Four Seasons? Rebecca Cron, she finished performing. But me, I had to perform. <laughs> what were you doing? Were you doing fall? Or winter? No. No, sorry, Russian seasons. Of oh, Russian ballet. seasons. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah I was like. And uh, it's a long ballet. It's like, yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah, and you were, were you the, what, what color were you? Were you the red girl? No, I was one of the soloist girls. Oh, okay. I think I was burgundy, uh -huh. something like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. And um, that's, a, I, that's quite I a head trip. Like, I was putting on my costume, and I was calling my mom, and like I was like, I just got promoted and I was like crying with my mom on the phone um and um gosh that's really the whole performance I was texting people I was like <laughs> oh my god I'm gonna miss some entrance <laughs> that is so cute I love that I love that you know what is killing me lately is your Instagram series with your espresso in a crop top what is going on we all want to know <laughs> I, every day and then and then it's and then it's you in a full-length mirror and all the uh -huh. shots are the same I've been dying you kill me so much okay so the first time I actually did that 
was because I actually never drink coffee. I, I drink, but not like every day. I drink but every really day. But really when the quarantine started, um, really for a whole week, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I was just in bed, like, and then watching Netflix and nothing, you know, and eating and just breathing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then I was like, oh, God, I actually have to get up. I, I cannot be like this <laughs> any longer. So then I like, started drinking coffee in the morning <laughs> to start, like, having some uh, different energy to, yeah. like, start doing stuff. Because it gets um, groggy when you're just in the same place for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's boring, too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Sometimes we're like, oh, I cannot wait for the weekend to really do nothing. But after a while of doing nothing, you start getting Yeah, bored. you're ready to go back. Yeah. Exactly. And I also feel like, you know, like how like when you get injured and like, you feel like your calves are like disappearing and like just like falling down, you know, like you just see the bone or something. And I was like, oh, my God, my calves are disappearing. <laughs> So you're like, I got to get in the program. So what's your program now? So now, basically, uh, I have to change my hours because I'm a mess. But actually, <laughs> now I notice that I shouldn't because the time difference with New York and the U.S. and everything is better if I do the stuff that I do at, like at 5 p.m. or something. Like if I want to do a live or something, it's better. Mm -hmm. um, but... Yeah, I'm getting up really late. I'm going to sleep super late. Like, it's bad. But at least I'm doing everything. Like, I get up, let's say, uh, 2 p.m. <laughs> because I went to sleep at 6 in the morning or something. Um, but at least I'm getting up. I'm doing everything. I, I do my whole routine that I do a lot of strengthening, uh, ab workout, uh, ankle stuff. Um, and then I do a ballet bar um, what is your um, exercise routine based on? Just like all the different exercises that have worked for you over the years? Or is it a specific, you know, training uh, method? I, I do a lot of uh, abs and I, lo I do a lot of Pilates stuff on the uh -huh. ball as okay. well. Uh, then all my ankle strengthening that I do on the bazoo and stuff, it's from rehab from uh, things I learned when I was injured. And... Uh, so I do a whole combination of things that work for me the best. Cool. And, um, and then you I've do always, a class. I've worked out really to work out. Yeah, you, you do. I remember you posting yeah. things. Yeah. But especially I enjoy it more when I'm off because if I'm also rehearsing a lot and everything, it's kind of hard in the body to do so much. You That's know? true. That's true. So then you give yourself a bar and then you do yeah. Rosa Daggio in your studio. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that with a it's, with a broom. This, yes, but you know why? Because uh, it was a challenge from Zarelli. Uh -huh. You know, uh, this brand of uh, sportswear, and okay. now they're starting more of ballet uh, wear as well. And uh, they said that uh, whoever wins gets like a gift certificate and some money and whatever. And I was like, I'm just going to do it. I actually won. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I am not surprised. I did it. Like, a, I, I choreographed it only once. Like, I was like, oh, I'm going to do this and here, no, no, no. And I just did it one time and that's it. You know, it's not like I did it many times. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's fun that um, I have a challenge uh, like that. Yeah. Um, and it, I think it was fun. And then I actually did another video like that of, of Don Q. I did the whole Don Q by myself. It was a disaster. I did a lot of photographs, that's for sure. <laughs> that's really cute. I love that. <laughs> and now I'm missing to do potty day, you know? I'm yeah. missing to do... Yeah, but you're figuring it out. I mean, it's, it's nice to, to test yourself and figure it out, just holding on to something. You know, yeah. it still gives you a lot. You're, I have to say, you're doing a really amazing job about keeping going. Um, all, all I think about, though, is like, oh, my God, the stamina is going to be so bad. I know. But you know what? I think that we'll start back 
in a way where we have some time to actually be in real studios before we're back and you know, we've oh, all been sure. having our breaks. I, I've never been really injured, but I've taken some breaks away from ballet and you've taken some breaks away and you know that yeah. like you can get back. So it's okay. Mm-hmm. You, you did this amazing yeah. post on Instagram about your sister and I did not realize her status. How is she doing? Yeah. And, you know, I just want to mention it because I think there must be some young kids out there who yes. have some type of family circumstance or tragedy in their life and how do you dance through that and dance past that I think it's really inspiring um it's it's hard because I mean I already went through with my parents my mom uh, had uh, cancer as well and she passed away and then my dad passed away two years after um I think uh, just just through that how did you how did you deal with that because I was with you when you when that happened and you powered through I in a way that I don't think everyone would be capable of. I mean, you lost both of your parents in a very short amount of time, and you were very close with your mom. And you probably yes. didn't spend that much time with your dad as much as you would have liked to before he passed away. So, like, I just, I think it, you just have done so well. How did you do it? Um, well, when my mom passed away, actually, a few that was in October, in October two thousand. Uh, 13. Yeah, it was a long time ago. And let me tell you, I actually had a major injury two months after. I remember that now. And um, I don't know why I had this major injury. Uh, I already started having a pain in, a, in my bunion because that's my injury I had for a year and three months. I was out, completely out, not being able to dance. Um so, I mean, I did my best through that. In fact, it was a horrible injury because even the doctors, they kept doing injections and everything, but um, nothing was... What no was it? Was it a, a, some type of fracture? No, I actually did, had a partial tear in the tendon. It's called the abductor hallucis tendon that attaches to the bunion. And um, so... Is it basically even, just because your bunion even got... Walking, even walking through it, I had pain. It was awful pain. Do you think it, um, it's just like, like basically if a bunion injury gets to be so bad, this is what happens? Yes, I think uh, after this injury, like... I always have uh, sometimes pain there, and I always make sure my um, uh, muscle of my this muscle. You is have old. your punches on. Massage it. <laughs> yes, because I just finished my workout and I still kept my punches on. I have my slippers on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I always make sure my arches are as uh, not uh, not as tight as much as I can, you know, because uh, I always it's a chronic thing nowadays that I have, um, but not that that pain I had before. No, um, but let's go back to what yeah. you said. How yeah. did I cope with this? Well, during the whole process, it was hard um, because mm, the doctors didn't really know. They, I had many injections. I had PRP injection. I then I had also I had um, uh, cortisone. Um, I had like three PRPs, no two PRPs, one cortisone. And at one point, after seven, six months or seven months of the injury, uh, they were like, "Oh, maybe you should do another uh, PRP." And I was like. You know, yeah. I was like, I'm not doing another PRP, and I at that point I was actually not doing very well emotionally uh, because of the injury. Of course, yeah, my mom passed away, but that was uh, on the other side. Mm-hmm. At this point, I wanted to be back with ballet, you know, and uh, I remember going to uh, a gala of New York City Ballet, which I didn't even want to go see ballet because for me it was in a way depressing yeah because i i couldn't do it you know right um but i went to the gala and then many people were asking oh my god i haven't seen you how are you and the how are you 
what was actually that night destroyed me completely. I was home and I was like in tears crying. And um, that's when, when, seriously, when I cry, I have sometimes maybe the best ideas. <laughs> so I think people, if you feel like you need to cry, I think people need to cry. Let it out. Because uh, from, yeah, from crying, I think you uh, come out with a way of uh, helping yourself to not feel this way. Um, and I thought of going home. I was like, I'm going to go home. I was going to go for two weeks to visit my dad. And um, I ended up staying there two months. Uh, like uh, with the workers' compensation, I had to uh, call my doctor, and the doctor was fine. He just kept my process because I wasn't back. I had I couldn't dance <clears throat> with this, and um, so I stayed there two months. I think uh, mentally was a way to charge myself with. Had, had you yet seen your dad since your mom passed away? Uh, since my mom passed away, no. You guys didn't even see each other no. at a funeral or anything? No, yes. Yes, of course. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. And that was like October 2013. But then I got injured in December and I, I didn't go home for that whole time because I was also like doing injections. And, yeah. You trying know, to get back. All these, trying to get back to therapy and all these things that I had to be there. I couldn't go home, you know? Um, so... After two months in Ar in Argentina, I came back, still was with pain, um, but slowly I started going to the studio, and at that time, uh, Nikolai, who was my boyfriend, I he was helping me to do part of this and everything. Little by little, I started doing more, and so I was back for a spring season of 2015. Wow. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of 2015, of course, I spoke with the director, and I told him that at that time I couldn't dance everything because I couldn't do big jumps for yet, mm -hmm. you know. So actually, I did some hard things for my first performance. I did a uh, <laughs> uh, four temperament, um, <laughs> sanguinic, sanguinic, you know, like, which is crazy hard. You have to do those gargly odds. Yes. I came to do that. Also, I did symphony in C first movement. <laughs> um, so you're back. What else? Yeah, and they actually wanted me to do a flower festival, and I was starting little by little, and I was like, I'm not doing this. Yeah. It's a lot of jumps. It's a ton it's of not jumps. happening. Yeah. 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 So How was I it? had to take myself out. So, so do you feel like the injury was this process of taking a step back from life and, and processing, you know, the loss of your mom or, or was it more of a challenge? Was that something that was necessary or was well, that something that like, was super difficult? Some people, some, some people were saying, oh, you know, I'm sure this kind of happened because of your mom. And I was just like, God, this is not, <laughs> you know, I'm really trying my best to be back. Right. Like, right. And like, I'm one person that I'm really like, I'm really positive, really. I'm very hard worker. Um, so I never saw it as one of the, those kind of things. But maybe I did meet that time, you know. Um, but it was suffering time. It was not fun. Right. Right. And <laughs> you, you know? were alone, uh -huh. right? Like you were, your mom was your housemate, wasn't she? Or at that point, she didn't live with you. I was alone, but at that time that I also got injured, I kind of wanted to be alone. I didn't want anybody. Yeah. <laughs> I just, like, even if it was family, uh, maybe once a week I would see my sister. But because for me, it was like I needed my time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you and, know? And then... Um... Your dad passing away was a sudden thing, and you danced through that. Yes, I did dance through that. And in fact, my dad passed away, and I had to do a gala a week after in Argentina. In Argentina, wow. Yeah. Um, that was, uh, 
a big loss for me because I didn't, I didn't have my mom anymore. Um, so, yes, it was hard. But now so many years passed away, I feel like we, with my siblings, we're very close, even closer than we used to be because of this. Um, so, of course, I always think about, like, let's say some moment in my life, like, let's say performing um, here or going to, when I went to it recently in, in January to Italy, uh, I would love my parents to just come, you know, because they're fun moments, you know, that in your life that you just like to share this with your parents, you know. You're so um, strong. And sometimes Anna. I wish I were around. You're huh? so you're so strong. I just remember when your dad passed away, looking at you at work, and like I just didn't know how you did it. Mine. You are a very yeah. resilient person, and I know how close and important your family was. It, it's not a matter of how much you know, you weren't connected to them, like you were incredibly close to them and, and you just dealt with it with, with such grace, you know, I've seen mm -hmm. other people deal with those mm -hmm. moments and you can, people can really, really struggle to just function normally and, and somehow you've really always just powered on and I'm just keeping your sister in my thoughts now and how is okay. she, how's she coping? When was the last time you got to see her in person? Um, I went in, um, uh... Christmas and New Year's um, and um, so I spend the time there and uh, now she's I mean she you know she has brain cancer it's a horrible thing because um, there is no cure for this there's only uh, treatments you know slowly they're coming up with new things like immunotherapy that they do some injections of this kind of thing but it's still not uh, something that really cures it um but uh, she's still in she's she does she's doing for example now chemo she's already had two surgeries in the head as i posted right like the cut is like this big you know um and um, I think she is one of the strongest person I ever met in my life, to tell you the truth. Because going through that kind of thing, uh, I, I couldn't even, I wouldn't even know what would happen to me. I feel like I would just give up. <laughs> I know. I know. I've tried to think about it before, too. Nope. And it's like incredibly impossible to understand how people function and continue because and some, some people would be like oh it's okay i'm i'm gonna die okay let's die you know <laughs> like yes it's true yeah because i even a doctor i told a doctor oh yeah my sister has this he's like oh you know like my sister had that and she said i'm not gonna do any treatments you oh know? interesting so you're saying she's fighting yeah. she's fighting for it yes yeah yes. That's, yeah, and it takes a lot I, of courage to do that. Yeah, I really think so. You know, the only silver lining out of this type of thing is that for your life, it gives you this incredible perspective about what's really important. You know, and I feel like that's kind of why you have this positivity because you know, oh, this little trouble today—that's not really a trouble. Like, you know. Yeah, like, for example, now in quarantine, people are like, oh, I'm so bored, or this and that. And it's like, God, do you realize you have health or something? Do something for your life, yeah. you know, and uh, try to do the best you can in your life. But I don't know, like... Well, you never know, like, how many days... Some to live. Yeah, exactly. You never know how many, like, every day is a gift. You never know how many days you'll be given, and... And even yeah. if it's in this weird time of like quarantine, there's still like a lot of like joy and laughter and great moments to be had. And I think you're a really great inspiration for people, young dancers to like see like, you know, how, how you can push through difficult moments, how you can adjust in your career to different needs that you have. And like, I feel like you're really thriving where you are right now. And I'm really, really happy for you. But I miss you. <laughs> I miss you guys too. <laughs> it's been so good to catch really, up. Really, my New York friends are like uh, my favorite friends. <laughs> it's been a really long time since you and I chatted. This was great. Yeah, yeah. 
You look like because you're doing so I well. 2018 to New York, I didn't see you. No, I, I haven't seen you in Gonzalo. forever. Yeah, I it, didn't see you. It's been forever. So this is fun. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad to like share your story with everybody because you've been on an interesting journey. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're really happy for you, Anna. And stay safe and keep drinking that coffee and working hard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. How is your baby? She's good. She doesn't know that there's She's a good. weird pandemic going on right now. So we're having fun. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's yeah. great. Yeah, we're having fun. <laughs> I send you all my love. Oh, uh, me too. And uh, I hope you stay safe and that everything goes well during this whole time. Thanks so much, and Anna. stay healthy. Love you. Mwah. Love you too. <laughs> Bye.